Hello Unreal users, Alexi, your Unreal Guide and we are continuing with our light mass baking in order to get photorealistic results with Unreal Engine. As the continuation of a previous tutorial, we did uh, some light mass density adjustments, we also added some um, light mass portals, we also added importance volume and a neutralizing uh, post-processing volume for our camera so it will not ramp up and we added some reflections in every room all right so this is the preparation now we can start adding lights the first light that i'm going to bring is um, directional light which is uh, emphasizing the sun so i'm going to put it here and i'm going to go to the lit mode right here and I'm gonna position it in order to have more light coming into my space something like this maybe I'll give it a little angle so it will look a bit interesting all right now in this light I'm going to adjust the intensity so somewhere here, let's do 26 lux and let's do some soft angle here. Temperature, as you know, with the temperature we can change the color, so uh, somewhere around this 4400 and we're going to adjust indirect lighting intensity here we're actually we're going to do it in the second build all right so let's do one build without adjusting this value that way we'll be able to understand what it actually does okay now second light i want to bring in is my skylight And in this skylight, I'm actually going to switch it to static. And we're going to load HDRI here later on, do some adjustments. But for now, let's do a bake without that. So I'm going to uh, disconnect it from affecting the world. That's, that way it will not affect and we will only get a build that comes from that from that light here okay yeah I want I want a lot of it coming into the room something like this I'm gonna do some sunset okay now let's go ahead and adjust our rendering settings basically light mass baking settings okay so we're gonna click on the world settings here if you don't have that panel you can bring in it from uh, window world settings and open up light mass and let's do some adjustments so um, this we're gonna put to 0.5 static light mass uh, level scale and if you read some documentary this uh, parameter of a static level scale is connected to the indirect lighting quality so the indirect lighting quality multiply static level scale gotta be at least one uh, so this needs to be two here i'm putting four in order to get a little bit slightly more precise so basically you know breaking the rules it's not such a bad thing as long as you know what you're breaking <laughs> all right so um, this will give me a nice quality now number of indirect light bounces and the sky light bounces i'm going to put into 10 so we'll have a lot of those uh, bouncing lights uh, you know the light comes in it bounces one time the second time you know and keep bouncing around the scene so the indirect light and the skylight i want to have them both at 10. and um, here i'm not gonna do anything except i'm going to adjust the detail cell size okay volume light map detail cell size so we have adjusted our light maps and in every light map 
we have those little squares and uh, in them the calculation goes per 200 if i lower it to 90 so it will be a little bit denser in those in those light maps it will give me a little bit more precise um, result you know small nice fine ambient inclusion around the objects around the corners now uh, we need to also adjust the uh, packed shadow map texture size let's bring it to 4d96 so we will have nice big maps and let's see what else we gotta do here um this parameter compress light maps i'm gonna leave it on uh, for vr it's very good um, it's gonna compress light maps but if you do any video production this probably needs to be off if you do any high quality uh, video or stills so we're gonna leave it on for this sake of idea in order to have everything you know go a little quicker and you know if we want to go into VR we can shoot it right away but just remember to for the final production if you do any production light mass baking uh, for video we're gonna turn this off all right so we're gonna turn this off later on but for this for now we're gonna leave it on all right and um, that's about it that's about it in this one so let's go ahead and uh, make our build let's let's bake it and see what we get the bake probably gonna take around uh, you know between five and ten minutes depends on your computer so i'm gonna use preview and i'm gonna click uh, bake light only all right light bake is complete we've got some uh, overlapping here with the world we gotta go make a list of those and uh double check them but uh this is not really uh crucial things we can see here the overlaps are very very small okay here's our build i mean it's looking all right with one light only and uh but we can see that the dark areas are very very dark the shadows are pretty dark we don't get nice uh glow here like we would expect get a little bit but not too much all right so but uh the ambient inclusion looking pretty good now let's add this parameter here indirect light intensity this is the secondary bounce you know like in Viri we have the primary bounce the secondary bounce we can do irradiance map light cache or brute force brute force this is the secondary bounce it means we get first direct hit and then how many times it keeps bouncing inside our scene from that particular light so let's put 10 you can do more than that but for this sake of idea let's do 10 and just see how this works i'm gonna click build light only and uh, again let's execute it and see what we get all right and the second build is done and here we go we can see everything is light up pretty good we have nice glow uh, from the bounce nice natural glow here going on but obviously this is a little bit too much okay it's uh, way too bright but uh, at least now you guys know what's this indirect lighting intensity it's very important parameter in order to get uh, nice lighting nice photorealistic lighting in your scene so i'm gonna lower it down to two i already did a couple of tests so if eh, in my previous tests number two was good but again it depends on your scene if you have big openings or small openings i have big ones so i don't have to bounce a lot but if you have smaller openings you probably want to go higher you can go all the way up to 30 40 50 you have to do some tests 
okay so I'm going to disconnect that because we already set it up and I'm gonna go to my uh, map here for the sky and I'm gonna do here if we switch it to let's see stationary or movable okay let's do this I'm gonna uh, activate that effect world of course I need to have it on static and I'm going to bring the intensity to 10 and I'm going to drag my HDRI map I have HDRI that's got nice color tones I'm just gonna drag and drop it here and I'm gonna select SLS specific cube map and select this map that I just brought in so this map got really nice colors and those are the colors uh, that I want to use um, I got this map from my friend Karim shout out to my <laughs> best digital friend we haven't seen each other but we're talking and exchanging uh, good info so thanks a lot for this uh, HDRI map he made it them himself so that's a very cool unique uh, HDRI map that I'm going to use for uh, the sake of idea okay now I'm activating the effect world and disconnecting effect world from my Sun that way I'm gonna test just this uh, HDRI ambience colors and ambience presence of this map okay so let's do another build and see how our skylight contributing to our scene all right and the ambience was baked you can see we have nice colors coming in very soft lighting uh, this is just the ambience ambience light that we need in order to get a more photorealistic result from the skylight from the HDRI map stuff is pretty good getting those nice bluish tones okay so with balancing this we can go and select our direct light and add it to the scene effect world and now we can finally bake our entire scene with a direct light and a skylight the ambience and see what we've been uh, doing all this time spending so much time uh, isolating and tweaking those lights now it's time to bring both of them together and see how our scene looks with direction light and skylight all right and the build is complete let's go check it out um, it's slightly over exposed it's looking good but it's a little bit too bright so I'm actually going to lower my intensity of the sky here I'm going to put it on three I'm gonna put it on three and uh, just a little bit too overexposing here on the sides uh, and um, it's, it's just not looking too realistic so lower your intensity of the HDRI map here and let's see if our sky is on two that's good and let's do our final build in order to make sure everything is well balanced okay that's the procedure first tweak your indirect light then your skylight then build them together and if something needs to have 
additional tweaking um, like this ambient occlusion map that's what we're gonna do all right so I'm gonna click build light only and let's see what we get all right and the build was complete now it's looking slightly darker we don't get those overexposed areas too much we have nice soft shadows of course minus the artifacts we put it on the lighting mode here you can see this stuff got pretty cool ambient occlusion going on nice and soft and we're also getting uh, colors from our skylight uh, i like this corner here especially the light is gathering the photons gathering pretty pretty well in those dark areas uh, and again we're just using the preview mode okay if you want to get high quality and do high quality tests it's going to take probably a few hours but you got to go here to production switch it to production and click build all right now in the next tutorial i'm going to show you how we can add hdri image in order to have photorealistic background for our loft so if you want to learn how to add hdri images join me for the next tutorial thanks a lot for watching this is alex here again Ciao.